So in this video, we're going to be talking about the gain of a semiconductor G, and in particular, how it's a function of the carrier density, uh, N. And uh, why do we want to do this? Well, we've developed so far uh, an understanding for the absorption spectra of a semiconductor. So now we can actually write out what it looks like, and that's super cool. Uh, so we know that it's going to be zero below the, the band gap, so our semiconductor isn't going to interact with any photons. And then above the band gap, uh, let's initially su assume that uh, this is at zero Kelvin, so we don't have to worry about any broadening. And let's draw this line corresponds to uh, our carrier density is less than our transparency carrier density, so we don't have to worry about the Fermi inversion factor. We know that the absorption will sort of follow this square root dependence of the photon energy uh, minus our band gap. And there's also a 1 over photon energy in there, but I'm going to ignore that for now, uh, just to focus on the functional dependence very close to the band gap. But now we know if we increase the carrier density beyond the transparency carrier density, or in other words, we're increasing the Fermi level splitting beyond the band gap, then we can actually get a curve that looks like this, where for a certain region, uh, so this energy here is delta EF, where in this region, we've actually got negative absorption, or we've got, we call this gain, and then beyond the Fermi level splitting at T is equal to zero Kelvin, uh, we just get regular old absorption again. And we can redraw this curve. Uh, instead of being in terms of the absorption, we can draw this gain as a function of photon energy. And that's just the negative of the absorption curve. So uh, let's, we'll still draw these asymptotes. So these envelopes as we, as we call them. Uh, but instead our, our spectra for uh, carrier density greater than the transparency carrier density, our spectra looks like this. So it's just been inverted. Uh, we, we've just changed our axis so that the gain is just negative of the absorption. Because uh, generally in dealing with lasers, we prefer to deal with the gain because it's a positive quantity uh, when our laser is operating properly. And actually, let me be totally explicit. Let's not draw the, the envelope over here. Um, so this corresponds now, this line is uh, our carrier density is less than the transparency carrier density. And this is, it's greater than the transpar transparency carrier density. We don't know how much, uh, but we know it's got a certain Fermi level splitting delta EF, and that corresponds to a certain carrier density N. And let's say that this red curve, I don't know what the transparency carrier density is, but let's say that the carrier density is, uh, I don't know, two times the transparency carrier density. And let's say we draw another curve uh, for some carrier density even greater than that. So maybe this is n equals 3 times the transparency carrier density. In general, as we increase the carrier density, we're going to increase our Fermi level splitting. And that's going to cause this whole uh, absorption spectra to essentially be shifted, or a crossover point from when we get gain to when we get absorption is going to be shifted to the right. Now, if I'm a photonics engineer, I'm probably going to be most interested in this peak value. So let's call this the peak gain, uh, because I want my laser to operate as efficiently as possible. So I want to operate at the energy that corresponds to the highest possible gain for a given material. And so this would be the peak gain for a carrier density of, for example, three times the transpar transparency carrier density. This would be the peak gain for two times the transparency carrier density. And you can plot this peak gain as a function of the carrier density. And it turns out you'll get something like this. So we've got carrier density on the x-axis and we've got our peak gain on the y-axis. And uh, these two curves just correspond to individual points on this curve. So we've got one peak gain here and one peak gain here, for example, for two and three times the transparency carrier density. Uh, and if our carrier density was equal to the transparency carrier density, our peak gain is just zero uh, because we never get gain. For any carrier density lower than the transparency, we will never get gain. So we can plot one point on this graph. Uh, we know that at the transparency carrier density, our peak gain is gonna be zero. And you can actually plot this. Uh, it would be kind of hard because you'd probably need to do it numerically. 
uh, because we saw in previous videos, in order to just determine the transparency of carrier density, you need to do some fairly complex numerical, uh, numerical stuff. So to determine what the gain is at something that's not the transparency carrier density uh, is exceptionally difficult. But if you plot it, it'll look something like this. So it's sort of this gentle sloping line. And some clever scientists a few years ago discovered that, well, uh, I mean, this isn't, this isn't a great way of doing things, but we can approximate this curve, uh, this peak gain as a function of the carrier density n, as a logarithm. So n divided by our transparency carrier density. So when n is equal to ntr, uh, this curve is going to be equal to zero. That corresponds to this point here. Uh, but when n is greater than ntr, our transparency carrier density, this is going to be positive. And so this g naught here is some fitting parameter. Uh, and generally, you measure it, or you'll be given it, uh, or you'll know it for a particular semiconductor. But this turns out to be a pretty good approximation, uh, at least for the, the typical ranges of carrier density that lasers operate with. Now, there's a couple subtleties here that you should be aware of. So this isn't just the gain at a specific wavelength. Uh, this is actually the gain that corresponds to several different wavelengths. So each, uh, each point on this curve corresponds to a slightly different wavelength. Because as we're changing uh, n, we're changing the peak wavelength at which this curve has its maximum. Now, the reason that this is so useful, so the reason that having this expression is so great, uh, is because we're going to be dealing a, a lot with uh, dynamics of lasers coming up. And we're going to need an expression for the gain as a function of carrier density, even if it's crappy. Uh, so even if we don't like it, even if it's not perfect, um, this is going to be super useful in relating the carrier density to the number of photons we have in the cavity. And these will allow us to determine uh, our laser frequency response, for example, so how, how quickly our laser can operate. This also tells us for a given carrier density, uh, this constrains the mirrors that you can use. So if you have super lossy mirrors, so say you've got some cavity, and you've got super lossy mirrors on either side, so almost all of the photons escape, then you're going to need a really high gain inside this cavity in order to compensate for all of these photons being lost. Uh, and this uh, equation roughly tells you what carrier density you need uh, for a given mirror loss, and you can calculate that. And we will in future videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you ha have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.